All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your host, Larry, back for some more select items from E3 2017. And today we'll be taking a look at the new Metro game that's coming out, Metro Exodus, which takes place sometime after the events of Metro Last Light. And if you're unfamiliar with the Metro series, it's essentially the post-apocalypse in Russia where everybody is living inside of the kind of underground ruins of the Moscow Metro system. And they're scavenging around for supplies like ammunition left over from before the war, along with like, you know, foodstuffs and other materials, and just trying to stay alive in the aftermath that is Russia. Now I kind of, was surprised that I liked Metro Last Light so much. I think it's probably the more survival horror aspect of the series that I kind of enjoyed. And spoilers for anyone who didn't see Metro Last Light, but that one was about, you know, dealing with strange alien mutants called Dark Ones, which is kind of in the beginning of the game, so I'm not spoiling too much. And finding out how to interact with them in the ruins of the world and nuking them initially. And it has an interesting ending if you're a good boy. I surprisingly, when I played that game, didn't get the bad ending where everything kind of goes to shit and you die. And in this game, I don't know how it fits in. The story has not been revealed yet, but what it does look like they have is obviously those juicy rat mutants that everybody loves and craves. And also something of an open world mechanic where you've got like a pseudo open world to explore in what's left of Russia. You know, you go and explore the different facilities and stuff that people have built on top of the decaying ruins of a once large country. And I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I've seen pseudo open world mechanics in a lot of games that were meant to be a more plain Jane to the point first person shooter like Lara Croft and Tomb Raider, like the, the prequels prequel. And, you know, it's fine for an exploration mechanic to be able to go back and explore stuff you just didn't care to explore the first time. But at the same time, it's not actually open world, and it always just kind of feels like they waste a lot of time on those mechanics instead of really focusing on the more linear, story-driven experience that games like this typically are more known for. Now, this game has a lot of survival horror mechanics, like just general survival stuff in general. You gotta find filters for your mask, food, bullets that are both used to kill things and as you know, currency to buy stuff. So it'll be interesting to see if they can hit a nice middle ground. Now, a lot of times when I'm in a post-apocalypse or just any type of sci-fi environment, I, I'm kind of torn when it comes to like a crossbow as well, because the crossbows always seem like something that people started putting into games after Crisis did it, like it was just the popular thing to do. But even in the Crisis games, it never really seemed like there was a huge reason to do so. Like, I'm in a crazy alien super suit. The fuck am I doing with a shitty, like, crossbow? Give me a laser gun. Give me a silenced pistol from space. I don't care, but a crossbow for hunting is not... Well, not a crossbow, just like a hunting bow. Is not my... my type of, uh... Not my type of fun afternoon. But this game looks promising. I mean, it's hard to tell this early on because again, this is a scripted trailer. Like none of this stuff is, pro if it does happen in the game, it's probably so cinematic that it's not even funny. But it does look like they've gotten the trains running. Like you've got these crazy locomotives probably run off of a combination of coal and nuclear power that travel around Russia, guiding you through the different pieces of the story. And the story should be somewhat interesting in this game because the Metro series, from what I can remember from the trailers of this game and other games is they do have an actual basis in actual literature. Like there is a story that has been written by an author who has some control over the storyline in these games, 
who has taken the time to try and create a compelling reason why all of this stuff is happening and what's going on. And from what I can remember of Last Light, it's a combination of things. Like, the military was experimenting on people, on animals, as weapons. That's where you get some of the mutants. It's not all... I think some of it's implied that it's, like, the, the radiation and the chemicals. Which could be true. It certainly could be true. But, you know, there's something about that that doesn't quite add up. Maybe it's the alien factor from the previous game. Maybe it's completely unrelated, like maybe this is just so far in the future we've practically forgotten about missile striking aliens. And now we're just trying to survive and stop the next catastrophe, probably one that's left over from the old world. Or maybe the mutants are taking over. It's hard to say, we still don't really know a lot about the story. But I found this to be an interesting series and worth talking about, nonetheless. That said, you know, the guns in this game look like they've gotten an upgrade, like the shotgun you see in the start of this trailer. It's got this cool glowing plastic sights like you would see in like a modern day gun that's like half really finely honed metal and half like cheap little glowing plastic bits that keep you from shooting at a wall when you meant to shoot something between the eyes. And I'm definitely hoping that we see like a lot more of the scavenging mechanics in this game. Like, I feel like after we saw Horizon Zero Dawn be as successful as it was, that there's a lot to be said about being able to get most of the things that you need in the game from your surroundings if you're smart enough to go find it rather than depending on vendors in other parts of the game. Like, that's really compelling and it makes me feel like I'm self-sufficient and I have some major agency in a game as opposed to just a cheap so pseudo-open world mechanic where you're really just backtracking just to complete, like, achievements or side objectives or just garbage that's not really that important, which was the case in Rise of the Tomb Raider, which was super duper disappointing and I thought that was a pretty mediocre game on the whole. Like, that game just became a cinematic combat thing very, very quickly. And the last thing I felt like touching on is the environment design. Because I feel like we're getting a lot of that vibe that you got from a lot of towns in Fallout 4, where all the interesting, like, set piece design of, like, cars piled together and, like, rolled rundown houses was all crammed into, like, one or two of the bigger towns and cities. And then in between them, there was fuck all to do besides go fuck around with some trees and shoot an evil mutant dog. Like, I find that to be kind of disappointing. Now, something that does seem very interesting in this game as well, with speaking of the animals, is that Yes, you can reuse some of your ammo in this game to kill them, but also it seems like some of them just aren't worth your time to deal with. So it's better for you to just avoid them in general. Like in the case of the giant mutated bear. Like, that bear looks like it's got the mouth from, like, that movie The Species on Sci-Fi Channel. Like, it's gaping open, and it looks like it's got, like, some major chest wound action. as just a part of its natural body structure. But you wouldn't want to do, like, this thing's gonna take all of your resources to kill, and I don't really see a lot of point in pursuing it kind of a deal. So that's an interesting mechanic that I feel is very true to a post-apocalyptic scenario where you have very limited resources, like, nobody's manufacturing bullets anymore. All you have is homemade arrows, and even then, those take a long time to craft. So you can't just go fucking about and wasting them, you've really got to use them to their best effect. So, I think this might end up being pretty good, but it's way, way too early to tell, because again, this is almost one long scripted cinematic. I would definitely not- I would just take this at, like, face value, and just say it looks like one intro cutscene to the universe. So that's it for this one, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell me what you think about Metro, um, Exodus. And I'll catch you next time. Uh, have a good one, and toodles froodles.